and welcome back. Now today we're going to be looking at this little unit here which is an HC06 Slave Bluetooth module and we're going to get that to talk to this Arduino clone and it's going to turn on and off this little LED here by this app on my phone uh, which is a, a, a Google phone and by pressing the on button the light goes on and by pressing the off button the light goes off. You think this is complicated? Not one bit of it. It's easy, you can do it. Follow me in my journey and I'll tell you exactly how to do this from start to end. So the first question is, what do you need to actually get started? Well, first of all, of course, you do need the Bluetooth module. Now this is an HC06, it looks like this on the back. Um, now, there is um, an HC05 and the fundamental difference is that the HC05 can be both master and slave, whereas this HC06 can only be a slave. And what does that mean? Master, slave, what does that mean? Well, basically it means that this Bluetooth module, being a slave only, cannot initiate a connection. In other words, this can't say to my phone, Oi, I'm here, connect to me. It doesn't work like that. This is a slave. This can only be spoken to. Um, if you get the HC05, the module can wake up another item. So that if this was HC05, it could in fact talk to my phone or any other device that's Bluetooth aware and say, Oi, I want to pair with you or connect to you or whatever it is that Bluetooth modules want to do. However, in this demo, I'm using an HC06 because it just happens to be the one I've got. And for the purposes of what I have in mind here, it's more than okay. We can always move on to an HC05 sometime in the future. So that's the first thing we need. And as you can see, it's got all these things on the back. Now, if I had a flashing red finger, I'd point it to this thing here, level 3.3. That's the RX value, 3.3. Bear that in mind. We'll come on to that in a little bit more detail in the, in the minute. Now, what's the other end of this? Well, it's not an Arduino. It's not any kind of Arduino. It is, as it says there, an FTDI serial to USB converter. Now what this does, it allows you to connect your computer in via here, just like you would connect it with a, an Arduino. Also, this FTDI converter, as you might just see there, is dual voltage. It's got 3.3 volts and 5 volts, and it must be set to 3.3. So if you're going to get an FTDI conver uh, converter, USB to serial, make sure it's dual voltage like this. And of the pins at the bottom here, the only four we're interested in, two for power, so VCC and ground, that's the grey and the black here, and then TX and RX coming out here, and they go to the opposite one on here. So the TX on here goes to the RX on here, and the RX on here goes to the TX on here. All right, if you get that wrong, you'll spend 20 minutes wondering why nothing's happening. Don't ask me how I know that. Okay, so that's what you need is the very fundamental, just to make sure you can talk to this Bluetooth module. And I guess if you're into Arduinos, you've probably got an FTDI USB to serial converter. If not, now's your chance to get one. Okay, let's put the, oh, that's the app, by the way, that we'll eventually end up building. And that is really sim so much simpler than I thought it might be. Okay, and I've kept it deliberately very simple and functional. Right, at this stage, all I've done is plugged it in here. It's identified itself to my PC as being on COM port 20. Uh, so this is a, a blank sketch here. We're not actually going to use the IDE. What we are going to use is this serial monitor. This is the bit where the action happens. Now, although I've got uh, this all showing on the, the screen here, nothing much is going to happen here, except you can probably see that the red LED is flashing like mad on the um, HC06. Um, now that means, let me just bring that up nice and close. There we are, flashy, flashy, flashy. Now that's good because that means it's in pairing mode, waiting to be paired, because otherwise these commands won't work. Okay, so it must be in flashy, flashy mode before anything like this works. So in the debugging window up here, we're going to enter some commands to this well, effectively modem, I suppose. Now, make sure you have the no line ending set, otherwise it won't work properly. And make sure you've got it to 9600 board. Now, this comes pretty much standard 
at 9600 board, although it might, just might, be set to one of the other ones, which is, say, 38400. But uh, certainly the one I've got here and another one I've got all set to 9600, but I'll show you how to change that as well. So in the, um, the uh, command window here, let's first of all just type in everything in uppercase now when you type it into the, uh, into the modem command window. So AT and, and click the send button. And you can see here straight away it says OK. At this point, you can just relax have a cup of tea or something because what you've done is establish communication with this device here. Okay, now just to prove that, let's add something else. Let's have a look at what version the software is. So AT plus version. There we are. And that says, okay, Linvor V1.8. And that's pretty standard, I think, really. You'll notice that the output here all comes out on one line. That's because when this sends it out, it doesn't send it out with any kind of carriage return um, characters appended to it or new lines or anything like that. So it does tend to end up on one line. When your Arduino sends stuff out, of course, you do tend to append a, line, um, a carriage return or new line for it, as in serial.println, print line. Okay, so this, is, this is a bit like doing a serial.print. It just keeps going and going and going and going. But anyway, if you get this far with your FTDI serial USB converter talking to your HCO6 or 5, HCO5 Bluetooth module and getting this sort of result, then you know your Bluetooth module is working. Now I did mention you can change the board rate. Uh, you would do that, I'm not going to because I want this to carry on working actually, just for this demo at least. Um, you can say AT uh, B A U D board 4. Now that sets it to 9600 if it's not already 9600. So if you've done the AT and not got an OK but OK response, you can always try setting this one down here to 38400 or just enter AT board 4 like that, press send. It says OK 9600, so we know we're definitely running on 9600. Okay. Um, there are a few other commands, but not many, to be quite honest. The HCO5 has more, but the HCO6, being a slave, can't sort of initiate connections or anything. So having established this, we can sort of call a halt at that point and go, OK, we can move on to the next step. OK, step one was establishing communication, making sure the board rate's correct. Step two is connecting this up to your Arduino. Let's do that next. So here it is connected up to my Arduino clone board. I mean, this can be a Nano um, or a Uno, anything like that. There's just one caveat, um, and please, please follow this. The pin that's connected to the RX, the receive pin on here, which on this uh, layout is in fact pin six, has to go through a resistor divider, a potential divider. So we don't end up trying to put five volts in here. Now, this looks all a little bit messy and convoluted. I mean, it's not, but from your point of view, all you can see is wires and bits. So let's draw a nice circuit diagram that you can follow. Let's go for some uh, speed drawing. Shall we see how quickly I can do this? Right, that's the finished circuit diagram, and as you can see, it's very, very simple. Um, we've got the pin 4 going directly to the TX, so the HCO6 can deliver whatever it wants into the Arduino, that doesn't matter. Pin 6, though, which is uh, the receive pin from here, this has got to go through a potential divider. So the values on here are something like 1K and 2K. In fact, I think I said 1K2 and... 2K2 on my one, but I mean, as long as it's about that. So that goes to the RX, and the pin 8 will go through something like a 180 ohms um, resistor for an LED. Okay, so that's the circuit diagram. Do not try and omit these resistors and connect the RX directly to the Arduino, that'll be the end of your HCO6. All right, that pin there is 3.3 volts. Important. 
It even says it on the back of this, this thing here. It's quite clear that this is 3.3 input. However, that's the circuit diagram. So let's talk about the code now and have a look at our code window. So what we're saying is, oh yeah, include this library here. It's a standard library. Get my right window. Right, include this library here. That's a standard one for Arduino software serial. Rather than use the serial pins, otherwise we couldn't upload very easily. Um, I've chosen 4 and 6 for the uh, RX, TX, and then pin 8 for the LED, simply so it spaces out these pins a little bit, rather than all clumped together, that's all. No other reason. Um, in the setup here, all we're doing is setting the LED output pin, we're setting the serial window board rate, and we're setting the Bluetooth board rate. So we're setting the board rate for this, which you set in the previous part of the video, where we said 80 plus board 4, and that was equivalent of 9600. Okay, so that's what we used here. Um, you can set it higher, um, but the higher it is, the more unstable, I suppose, it goes. Anything is going to require, anything that requires a higher transmission rate requires a higher power. So 9600 is a nice, standard, stable board rate. Slow, admittedly, but stable, especially for a demo. Incidentally, if you ever set it above 115, 200, um, you're stuck. Even though this goes higher, you're going to be stuck because you haven't got any mechanism for resetting it back down again. You, you won't be able to talk to this board, so be very careful what you do there. Okay, the rest of this um, program is simplicity itself. What it says is, have I got on my Bluetooth serial now any data? If I have, then what we're going to do is read it, and we're only talking about one character here, because what I'm going to do is send a character down here to send it on, and another character, a different character, to set that LED off. Okay. So what we're saying here, we've got a switch statement. We're saying if it's a 1, set it on. If it's a 0, set it off. Anything else, if you happen to be looking at the serial monitor on your Arduino IDE, you'll get a not recognised, but it just won't do anything, basically. Now, the question is, having got this code in here, how are we going to test it? Well, I did show you a, an Android app that I wrote very quickly, which I'll come on to. But in the meantime, what you need is this app. It's effectively the equivalent of your serial monitor window, but running on your Android phone. So let's just have a look where we can get that from. It's on the Play Google Play. Uh, it's called Bluetooth Terminal, and it's uh, by QWERTY. Um, it's a very, very simple thing. You don't have to pay for anything. And it works pretty much as you'd expect it to on your serial port and the IDE. So, right, so this is what it looks like uh, when it loads up. Uh, just to show you the icon, let's go back a step. There's the Bluetooth terminal app installed on my phone here. Incidentally, none of this will work on an Apple because Apple have locked down the, B the Bluetooth in a particular manner and I don't think many people can get it going. There probably is a way, but not for this demo. So there's your Bluetooth demo, uh, terminal. Fire it up. There it is. Now it says at the top here, look, not connected. So we need to find this device. And as you see, flashy, flashy, flashy means I'm ready to be paired. So the first time you do it, you'll have to connect. It will say, what's the pin? And by default, it's one, two, three, four. Unless, of course, you've changed it while you were playing about with the FTDI. Oh, it's um, serial to USB converters. Well, well, this thing here was plugged in. If you played about the AT commands and changed the pin, that's the pin you need to use. But by default, it's 1234. So what we're going to do is click this and try and find it. Um, now, it says here, connected device insecure and secure. It doesn't need to make any difference, frankly. I guess secure means it must encrypt it in some way. I don't know. We'll just go for the insecure. Now, here are all the Bluetooth stuff that I have lined about. There's me, look, RSB, that's what I set it to. You can change the name. Um, I think I showed you that in the first part of the uh, tutorial. The name, though, is uh, not important when we come to the actual Arduino app. It's this MAC address underneath that's important. But for this now, we're going to use that. It says I'm connecting. And if you look at this, it says connected. This light here now is steady, which means I'm connected to here. And this is just like the serial port. 
So if we want to type something in here, I'll become a keyboard. Now, here's the, the actual connections, but that's not important. What what's important is what happens on the LED here. So we said we're going to have in the code, just to refresh your memory now, in the code, we're going to say if this receives a 1, we're going to turn the LED on. And if it receives a 0, it will turn it off. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward really, isn't it? So let's change this to numeric. So I'm going to press a 1 on here, and then I'm going to say send. And now it says I'm not connected because we've lost connection. Look, let's try that again. Connect a device. RSB. I don't know why it lost connection. Perhaps I knocked something. Now with power, it has been restored. Let's see if we can connect again. Insecure. RSB, thank you very much, and connected to RSB. Steady light, off we go. Right, before I knock anything else out, let's send this one, and with any luck, that LED over there is going to come on. And there we are, on it goes. Okay, so if we now send um, a zero, let's get the keyboard up, change to numeric, and I want to put in a zero, and press send, you should see that LED go off. Whoops, I don't want to send a smiley face. I don't think it'll understand that. There, off it goes. So this is pretty much like using the serial port on the Arduino um, IDE, except of course we can't use that because that's talking to a port on your computer, not, not to this Bluetooth module. Um, just as an aside, there are other Windows type um, Bluetooth serial connections. So we could have the equivalent program to this running on your Windows or presumably your Mac. Um, but I chose not to go down that route because we do actually want a program running on here eventually. So just to prove that again, we're going to send a 1, send, light goes on, press a 0, whoop, not a 9, a 0, light goes off. Now if we look at the serial monitor whilst we're doing this, you'll see the code actually running. So let's go back to our code window. Let me fire up the serial monitor so we can see what's going on. Right, there's the serial monitor. And as you can see, that's all the stuff that we've been sending down the wire so far. Let's just click that and clear it. Right, there we are. So we should see stuff come up in here now when I type stuff on my phone. So we'll come back to here, we'll press a one and we'll press send. And as you can see, the serial monitor has said on and the lights come on. So this is just the same as you'd expect the Arduino IDE to behave. So now we press, well, say we, say we sent down that. What's it going to do? Well, it's going to say, I've no idea what you're telling me. Not recognised hash and not recognised three. Remember, we're dealing with single characters here. I'm not making any attempt to um, reading a word here or, you know, some special command. I'm keeping this as absolutely simple as I can, just to demo the principle. Okay, let's uh, send down a zero then, which we do know turns it off. So there's a zero. It's a little bit awkward because I'm doing all this left-handed. Uh, never mind. Uh, hand send. So off it goes and it says off in the debug window. Okay, and those, of course, are being written out by these lines here and here. And that's basically it for this. Now, if, you got, if you've got this far, you're probably already thinking about, wow, what else could I do? Well, the, the sky's the limit, isn't it? Whatever you send from your phone, even using this serial monitor emulator type thing, it's still going to send stuff to the Bluetooth and your Arduino can then take whatever logic it needs to take. We're, we're turning on off an LED here, but that could just as easily be an opto-isolated relay, which then turns on a lamp, or your telly, or the music, or your sprinkler system, or whatever, I don't know. But it does give you an idea of what you can do. Right, the next thing then, this is all very well, and it all works okay from the serial emulator thing, whatever this is called, terminal. Um, but really we want a proper app, don't we? So let's think about that next. And the app is as simple as you can get, and it literally is like plug and play. A bit more like making a puzzle, really. You'll see why in a minute. 
Now please join me in part two of this video because that's when we really delve down and find out how to generate an app like this. Um, this is an updated app. Um, it does, does a little bit more than what was shown at the beginning of this video, but it does describe it in quite some detail how to get this far. But it is easy, all right? And you can impress your friends and family and say, you built it. That's what I did. I got away with it, so you can too. So please join me in part two. And remember, give me a thumbs up, share, and subscribe if you already haven't. Thanks for watching. I hope you're finding these videos interesting and useful. You can leave comments down below and also click that little button that says subscribe. Okay, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.